23 minutes away from 7 Tuesday morning. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern is with us. Good morning. Good morning. Now, can I just start with the swelling on your jaw? Because I've been following you with interest this week and have been concerned about any potential pain you still might be feeling. That's very generous of you, Mike. It does still hurt, and I will acknowledge that. I bet you I'm the only person who's asked about that. In recent times you are, and I appreciate that. Was it worse yep. than you thought? Uh, I, do you know what? This is probably going to come under the banner of too much information. I had something horrific not that long ago, a couple of years ago, called Quincy, and it's very hard for anything to, to be as bad as that was. Okay, so you're getting through, but, but does the doctor tell you the swelling will go down? <laughs> I have to admit, when the when the surgeon saw my face afterwards, he laughed, and I don't think that that's the normal reaction from an oral surgeon. Mm, he has he has assured me that it could take a couple of weeks because it was a particularly nasty one. But All anyway, right. now we'll talk about Thank the guns you. in a moment. A couple of quick updates. Yeah. Have you seen the CRL report as regards what they're offering by way of a hardship or compensation package? Has that gone to you or Twyford yet? No, no, I haven't. Um, I'm told that CRL Limited themselves um, will be working up and will. Approve. They don't need us to approve the design features. So they're working that up. The bit that we need to do is just ensure that they uh, have the, essentially the permission to do yes. it. So we tick that off, they do the design. They said work. they'd have it to you by the end of the month, so clearly that hasn't happened. So as, as I say, the bit we need to do is uh, give them permission yep. uh, to use their appropriation that way. So that's in train at the moment. Um, my well, how long will that, that take? The fund, oh, that should be done. I just asked for the paper to be expedited. It should go straight to Cabinet so we can shave off that process. So this will certainly be done by, they will have, the people of the CRL will have something done by Christmas. We should have, they, I would have thought they should have had the design of it. They're doing that bit though, so that's a question for them. Um, I imagine that they should be able to do that by Christmas. Yeah, I can't see why not. Okay, Maria, do you, where's the report at? Uh, last update I got was that she was looking to complete it um, uh, the side of Christmas. Uh, As you can imagine, Mike, I'm not really wanting to give anyone arbitrary timelines in something where the process has been so badly dealt with. Well, the only problem with that was you gave us a timeline of October, then you told it was November, and now you're telling us it's the start of Christmas. Well, you did. I'll pull the audio if you want. You said October, then it was November, now it's Christmas. I'm not setting the timeline the QC is. So from my perspective... So um, she can have as long as she wants. Does that bother you? I mean, is there something she's found that's going to come back and bite you? No, look, for me, Mike, it's just about not getting uh, this wrong a second time in terms of the process. So if I come in and arbitrarily say she must deliver it on X date no matter what, I expect that I would probably come under criticism for that. We need to let do this properly. The bit that Marie is doing is actually talking to the, um, uh, in the complainants uh, and the accused around the substance of it. Um, we're doing separately, we've got work on the process. So as you can imagine, that's not something I want her to feel she's rushed on. She just needs to do it in her time. Have you seen the Commerce Commission report into the petrol? Uh, no, I haven't. OK, so that's due out Thursday, so you're yet to see yes. that. Will you see it before it's released? Uh, I will likely, I'll likely be able to see the report um, before it comes out, I believe. Um, uh, but, of course, uh, those are always embargoed and tightly held until they're released. The $400 million you announced on Sunday, was that last mm. minute? Barry Soper was on the station yesterday saying he talked to you a week ago and you said there was nothing substantive in your speech on Sunday. Is that true? I, I did say, and I didn't consider this to be a, I told, what I told him was that we wouldn't be doing a complex large scale policy announcement and we didn't. You don't regard um, $400 million as large scale? I don't consider it a, a difficult complex policy announcement or something that's going to catch anyone by surprise. No, I don't. I consider this to be an ongoing part of our infrastructure investment. We've had big boosts to infrastructure, $1.2 billion in health uh, in uh, education already, Mike, to help refurbish and rebuild some 700 classrooms. So this is an ongoing part of our significant rebuild and maintenance program for education. And also we've been doing the same for health. So I didn't consider it to be a massive surprise, no. Right. When we get to next week and Grant Robertson's details on the borrowing program, how big is the borrowing program? You're asking me to announce details of Haifu, and uh, you just need to wait for that. Uh, not is it, too far away. Is, is, is it going to substantially shift our debt to GDP <laughs> ratio? I'm not going to give anything away on the uh, announcements made at the Haifu Fiscal Update. Are you comfortable running a deficit and borrowing program going into election year? 
I'm I'm comfortable that now is the time to invest in infrastructure. You know, I'll, I'll um, you know, if we borrow, we're looking at rates of 1.3 percent. We have incredibly low debt, particularly relative to other countries. Uh, you'd be hard pressed. There are a number of economists who are saying now is the time. We do have an infrastructure deficit, um, and we've heard that. We've, as I say, already investing. This is part of our ongoing program. Right. So to the gun leak, uh, two things. Why yeah. is the government in general? not cognizant of the importance of cyber security? We are. And well, you're not. I'm going to look. Okay. Is, well, if you I'm... are, you're not doing well, it well. Mike, let's just, who's responsible here? Uh, we've got a private provider, uh, SAP, well-known provider, you'll have heard of them. Mm. They're a global provider who themselves have put their hand up and said, this is our fault. Uh, they had, um, uh, they've called it base a human error. Uh, and so we are very cognizant. We have been let down. Are they going to get sacked? I'm going to leave all of that to be worked through between police and the provider. And when you say the police, is that the minister or the police? The police, of course. This is the ones that have engaged the private providers who have um, provided the database we've been working on for the buyback. Keep in mind, this is just something for the buyback scheme. That's because it goes to the here. credibility of the whole process. You fought hard on this, and there's been a lot of people who don't like what you're doing by way of a gun back, and this is just the sort of thing they've wanted. And if the idea at the end of the day is to convince people that what you've done is the right thing, this isn't helping, is it? Uh, if you're asking me, am I um, uh, annoyed and uh, pretty cross about the situation, the answer would be yes. Um, Keeping in mind, however, though, that we've been advised by the provider uh, that they can see one dealer has been able to access the information. Do you believe one. that? Because so we we've had people some, saying it's simply yeah, not true. Do. They've got screenshots and, of 15 people who've seen it. Yeah, and I've heard that information. I've gone back again and queried, um, and again, they've been given the same reassurance that it's been one person. So obviously we need um, the software company to, to reconcile that. So if you want to register, which you do, why would people be remotely confident that you can keep that information safe? Because keeping in mind, we've had a licensing scheme. We've had information for license holders um, uh, and their privacy protected for a number of years. E-category guns have also um, been registered. Not all guns, but E-category have also been safely registered. Uh, And so what we have here is uh, someone who is acknowledged human error by an external provider that's caused an issue. Our intent over the register, we're giving ourselves two years to develop that. Uh, And that's because we know we need to make sure we get it right. Is this a reason not to do it? Absolutely not. Why isn't Nash held more accountable? Um, because I don't, I don't think even you'd think it was fair that if we've got a private provider saying our fault, human error, and here was the issue over here, I don't think you yourself would find it fair if well, I then said that the minister. The well, how is it that the minister of police was meant to know that deep within one private provider, one person gave access to dealers that they shouldn't have? How how was he meant to know that? So that's that's your philosophy on not holding to people to account. No, so no, the only people you would hold to account not is the person at SAP who pulled the trigger. Not at all. But you yourself would argue, Mike, that private enterprise need to be left to do what they're contracted to do. We had, of course, expectations within that contract. You're now saying that now the Minister of Police, some distance away from that, should be taking responsibility. Yeah, but I think most of your listeners would think that was probably unreasonable. Because it goes to, well, I don't know they would actually, because it goes to political credibility. The whole program's got a political credibility no, problem no. and has done from day one. And it, now it's been made worse by a leak. It does not go to political credibility. It goes to the competency and the management of this issue by a private provider. Which ties in directly and, to political and, credibility. Mike, you're trying to tell me because someone made a mistake. We shouldn't have removed military-style semi-automatic weapons from New Zealand streets to keep people safe. I'm going to say that is farcical. Why haven't you moved on vaping? Um, we are moving on it. Uh, when? We, we're doing the doing the work as we speak. My understanding is it's not too far away. The complexity of it a little bit, Mike, and this is not to say it can't be resolved, it will be. The complexity, of course, is we have an existing regime for tobacco and the question and the debate exists around how much you have your vaping regime absolutely mirror tobacco or not. If it's a device that we want to use for people to quit smoking, then you're treated in a particular way rather than just having it as something that's avail- widely available and people might take up in its own right. 
I think our goal should be to help it as a tool to stop smoking, yeah. not as something that people individually take up. Before Christmas? Uh, I need to check in with the Minister. I'd like it done as soon as possible. We'll check next week. Appreciate your time, Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister. It is 13 to 8.